Hello, this is Thomas, November 1, Sierra Papa Yankee. And in my last project, I made a loop antenna for the HF ham radio bands. And the main part of that was the variable capacitor we picked up at the Orlando Ham Fest. And here we have another loop antenna with the main element being the variable capacitor. And it's actually a loop antenna for the AM broadcast bands. And since the AM broadcast bands are typically low frequency, we had to wrap the wire around a few times so that it has the length needed to be able to receive these signals. So the main parts of this antenna is the wire, which is the main receiving element, the variable, the variable capacitor, which when we turn, it allows the wire to tune to different frequencies, and the connector here, which I will go into detail about a little later. So this is a nice little radio from the 90s. As you can see, it is tuned to 1540 kilohertz, which is the AM band, and it is a station from Nassau, about 200 miles from home. So that's pretty far. This radio receives its signals from a little ferrite antenna inside of it, and the way to make it work with this antenna is through coupling. We have to put them very, very close together or inside of each other so that they can couple and be able to receive the signal. In electronics, we use the word coupling instead of connecting because you're not really connecting them because you don't really need to plug anything in between the radio or the antenna. So I've coupled the radio and the antenna. Now all I have to do is tune using the variable capacitor. So I'm going to have to turn the variable capacitor very carefully since this is a homemade antenna and the capacitor is very, very sensitive. Once we hear that little blip in the signal, we know that we're tuned. So, tuning the variable capacitor makes the signal much stronger and much easier and clearer to hear. And this is also inside, since it was raining outside, we weren't able to do it outside today. But if we were to take this outside, the signal would be even more clearer and even more stronger. And I still do have another part to do for this project, so stick around and that will be here shortly. In this part of the experiment, I'm using a software-defined radio or a software-defined receiver radio which can, with the help of a computer, it can receive an entire band. In this case, we're receiving the entire medium wave band. And the SDR does not have an antenna inside of it, so we have hooked it up to a mini loop inside the bigger loop, which will then be coupled with the bigger loop, and we will be able to receive some signals. The antenna has a very narrow bandwidth, and by messing with the variable capacitor, you are able to tune to a certain frequency. So if I move the variable capacitor counterclockwise a little, you can see a station start to come up. When you think about what the horror is at this point, even though you're getting creamed on the line, you do have to like Miley's position here, don't you? This is absolutely the position that you want to be in, okay? You're in a numbers end. So hopefully this gave you some insight on how a loop antenna works with a software-defined radio.
Just one more thing to add. Here we have is a commercially bought loop antenna. It has a, about the same wiring as this one, you know, the loop wiring. And it also has a variable capacitor here. But the difference is that this variable capacitor has thick metal with air in between it, meaning it's able to transmit small power, power and will not burn. But this one is separated with, with thin aluminum foil, and that foil will burn the second you transmit even the tiniest amount of power. So this, this loop antenna here was made only for receiving, while this one here can also transmit a little. Hope you learned a lot about loop antennas. I know I sure did. 73 from N1SPY.